I am pleased to be joined by the man who can help us. It's Daniel. Good morning to you, Daniel Madden. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do, if you would, please, before we get into the cut and thrust of the advice that we want to give out today. Tell us about you. Tell us about MerseyCare, if you would, please. Yeah, so MerseyCare is a provider of services, both mental health and physical health, in the community and inpatient settings, um, not just in Merseyside, across the Northwest, actually. Um, we have around 12,000 staff as well. So my role as a health and wellbeing coordinator is within our occupational health and wellbeing services. So essentially my job is about supporting our staff to be well. If they are well, then that will then have a, a good impact on patients. Um, so within occupational health, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have psychological therapists, and then we have a strand of the services which focuses on living life well, which is my service and my role is about developing programs it's about promoting them and then facilitating them to support the well-being of our staff yeah okay all sounds good to me guys just you pull your microphone a little bit closer to you mate so we can get the we need to make sure we get everything on board <laughs> here so uh there's a lot of questions i personally want to ask you because you know i mean i it, it's like i like to look after myself but for, for sometimes when i'm going to the gym or when i'm dieting or anything like that or when i'm eating i'm thinking to myself am i doing this right um so, for example, I decided, with it being January, I ain't doing dry January. Unfortunately, I don't think I've got the discipline to get me through that. But I did say to myself, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go three times a week to the gym, and I'm going to try and do the 10,000 steps a day number. Well, I managed to get seven days of 10,000 steps, and then I kind of dropped down to about six or seven. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't feel too guilty about that. But I did find that it was tiring me. I felt really, really tired, uh, and I'm eating more. You know, which is counterproductive to what I want to do. I, I want to try and lose a bit of weight off my stomach and what have you. So, is it wrong to go hell for leather when when you get to this time of the year and think, "Oh yeah, come on, I'll just smash it and then I'll be fine for the summer"? What What's the approach that you would take? I would say ease yourself back into it. I think sometimes we can have a, an approach of being seasonal with our activity. So you're right, right? This time of year, if you are somebody who goes to a the gym, they're very, very busy. Um, because lots of people may have a New Year's resolution of they want to get fitter or indeed they want to lose some weight, as, as you mentioned yourself. But, so, but I think it's important to start off gradually and build from there. We want to look at activity as something we can do throughout life rather than just thinking it as something we can do at a moment in time. In my role, I have staff who, who come and chat to me. Maybe they've got an occasion coming up, such as a wedding or a holiday, mm -hmm. or even they've had a health challenge. Um, and my advice is always the same. Think about how you can incorporate activity into your everyday life and then maybe look at some structured activity so that you're, you're hitting the guidelines um, in order to get the best results, which is quite important. Um, so what that means on a practical basis is... Can we be doing some activity which is going to be strengthening our muscles? Because that's yeah. really important. It's often something which we can neglect or not necessarily know what to do. Um, and you mentioned that the Roy, didn't you, in terms of having a, a clear plan. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go to a, a, a gym, incidentally, because not everybody feels comfortable in a gym environment. Gyms can be quite intimidating. Um, you have people who take it quite seriously, like myself. I'm somebody oh, who's you live really either, you, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, and there are some people who it's just not the thing, and that's okay. And I would say if you're somebody who's maybe you've invested in a gym membership, you're paying around £20 a month, I think is the general rate which people would be paying, and you find it's not actually for you, that's okay. Think about other activities which you could potentially be doing. From a strengthening perspective, using things like the machines and so on, you could actually do similar things at home just using things which you have around your own home to give you that little bit of extra resistance or even your body weight. Movements such as um, standing up and, and sitting down to a seated position is a great exercise to work on your, your legs. Um, pressing your arms over your head can work on your shoulders and in front of you can work on your chest muscles and things like this. So there are movements which you can do within the comfort of your own home without necessarily needing to go to a gym and pay for that membership because um, we know it's increased cost of living at this time as well and that's something yeah. to consider as well so if you think you could potentially use that money elsewhere then a gym isn't essential is what i'm saying to your to your fitness goals yeah i think i think what is good you know because you mentioned that a lot of people at this time of the year they'll be like oh right i'm gonna uh, you know i've got a wedding coming up and all of that which is is a good thing because it serves as a goal so it's a, it's a good motivational tool because motivation is the hard thing isn't it because it's all right thinking I'm going to do this. You lose interest after a couple of 
sessions. But if you've got that, I need to be right for this occasion, then having that goal is a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, and the motivation has to come from within. Whatever it is, you need to keep that in your mind, and that's what is going to spur you on to continue to be active. Um, and the key, as I say, is consistency. What we want to try and avoid is doing activity in short bursts, maybe seeing some results and then not continuing it for because use it or lose it is very, very true. And I say this all the time with fitness. Um, we can make progress, but if we don't keep up what we're doing, we can equally lose those gains, if you will. And that can be quite demoralizing if we're going through this cycle. Yeah. And that's why we say try and be active throughout your uh, throughout the life course and integrate activity into your general routine. Yeah, here's the thing though. What, what I would like to ask you, you know, when some people like me misguidedly, you think, right, I, I need to be coming out of the gym feeling pained. You know, that's not necessarily a good idea, is it? Really, it's not necessarily. No, all think about what your goals are. So if you mentioned about if we're trying to lose weight, for example, what we're looking to do is to achieve some calorie burn. So what physical activity is great at is helping us to burn calories. So that's one side of the equation. We obviously need to think of the other side of the equation, our eating habits, because those are the types of things which give us calories. But in terms of burning calories, we just need to think about doing some activities which are going to get us a bit of a sweat on, I would say. If we are sweating, even in, in the colder months like we're in now, if we are getting a bit of a sweat on, we're generating heat, which is going to be burning calories for us. Right. Um, and pushing ourselves too far to begin with probably isn't the best thing to do because it's likely to put you off returning to your training um, for a few days, whereas what we want to be doing really is be active on most days. Right. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean being in a gym, but it can be doing different activities to keep your, your, keep your fitness levels up. Um, and what I would say as well is it's, it's, I've said, I've used that catchphrase, use it or lose it. I would also say it's you versus you in the, in, um, when it comes to your fitness levels. It can be very tempting to look at what other people are doing in the gym environment or if we're out, um, we're out running, for example, or we're doing sports. But your fitness levels is something which you can improve as an individual and, and it's best not to compare yourself to other people yeah. in that regard. Yeah, I get it. You, you know, you just mentioned then that if, if you get hot and you're sweating, does that mean that if you do exercise, is it better to put extra layers on to make you sweat more? It can be quite deceptive in that regard because you're yeah. just generally then increasing your body temperature. Um, right. And another thing, what I would say is, in, in a lot of gym environments that we that we have, um, if you're somebody who's spending most of your time in the sauna rather than actually yeah. working out, then you're not going to be getting uh, some of those right, benefits. Of course. Um, your body's way of naturally um, getting rid of heat is to sweat, and then it will help get rid of some of those toxins, and that can be achieved by simply being active. And it, activity in itself generates that heat, which is a good thing again during these these colder months that we're going through so it's a way of keeping ourselves warm as well as a quick tip so even if we're at home if we've maybe not got the heating on as much as we maybe had previously doing some activity in our home environment you'll find that you can generate that body heat which will keep you warmer that um that little bit longer which which is a good thing in, yeah. again in these times of increased cost of living right okay listen there's much more for us to talk about and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this hour of the show. Don't forget, if there is a question that you'd like to put to Daniel, then you're more than welcome to do so. Get in touch with us, 0151 600 100, or you can send us a text message. Start your message with the word Scouse, followed by what you want to say. Send that over to 88440, and your text will be charged at your standard network rates, or you can email us via the website at liverpoolliveradio.com. Liverpool Live! Uh, welcome back. It is 26 minutes past 11 and it is a Wednesday. We're halfway through the working week and you might be thinking to yourself, what can I do to get myself in tip-top condition for 2023? The summer months are going to be coming before you know it and you'll want to look the part. Well, we might be able to help you with that today because we have the Health and Wellbeing Coordinator from Mersey Care with us, which is Daniel Melling. Now, Daniel, I mentioned earlier about this kind of routine that i've got at the moment where i am i'm kind of going to the gym and i'm doing the ten thousand steps a day and it is proving to be quite challenging because it does take a lot of your day up doing ten thousand steps yeah. it's amazing how many of those steps you can do when you're not thinking about it but you'd obviously need to be monitoring that so if you've got like when i have me, me phone me phone picks up on that but i know some people might get a fitbit but not everybody 
has access to that technology. So 10,000 steps a day, which is the equivalent, I think it's around about four miles or something like that. What, what's your take on the, the kind of the, the thinking behind a 10,000 steps a day? It's an interesting one, Roy. A lot of people will mention step counting and it's not something which I will generally promote. And in fact, it's not promoted in the guidelines for uh, physical activity within the UK. Rather, what we speak about is time and also alongside time is intensity. So what they say within the guidelines for things around um, walking, for example, or swimming, cycling, things where we're moving our body in a rhythmical motion. That's what we call cardiovascular activity, which is great for our heart and our lungs. We want to be looking to do about 150 minutes over the course of a week of this type of activity. 150 minutes. Yes, 150 minutes at a moderate intensity. So key thing to say that moderate intensity. If you're somebody who's, who is, um, dare I say, you know, dawdling along or you've kind of, if you're out walking, you've got your phone in your hand, you're not really paying attention to the activity, you're not brisk walking, you're going to find that you're probably not getting your heart rate up and you're not going to achieve the benefits that you would if you went that little bit right. um, harder. A g an easy way to monitor your intensity as well, if you're maybe with a friend, for example, you should be able to have a conversation with them, but you couldn't be sing a song, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, ah, right. You do want... <laughs> Good to sing a song. I like the idea of that. <laughs> yeah. You should be feeling that... We mentioned about wearing layers. If you was out for a walk, for example, that you may then need to take a layer off if you're out and about, because as I said activity does generate heat um but you should feel that your heart's working that little bit harder that your breathing rate's up and that's what we want because that is how we know that you're challenging your body and that's how you can get some of those gains um so as i say about 150 minutes of moderate intense activity is what we would encourage in that regard you can get the same benefits from doing less than that mm -hmm. 75 minutes in fact but that brings into the equation doing vigorous activity um and what I would say on that is it can be quite uncomfortable. And if you haven't done it before, um, yeah, it's not for everybody. And how we would measure vigorous activity would be in terms of you couldn't, you'd probably struggle to, to string a sentence together if you was talking. Somebody yeah. would be short bursts of talking. Um, it would be that intensity. Mm. So I would say for the average person listening in this morning, Roy, I would say focus on achieving those moderate intensity levels. So if you can put your phone in your pocket um, and just focus on even if it's 10 minute bouts and mm. build from there, then that's a good thing to do because that's going to make your heart more efficient and make your lungs more efficient, which yeah. will make your body more efficient. I, I, I know what you're saying about this, the whole um, time thing and what have you, but there are a couple of little things that you can do for example if you're going to go to the supermarket don't park near the front entrance you could always park that a little bit further away because that's picking up the steps and the other thing what i did the other day because the weather is obviously going to be something that's going to put people off at this time of year from doing that kind of exercise but i noticed the big ikea you know the big ikea yeah. then, uh, i walked around there and I thought, how many steps have I managed to get in here? You know what I mean? I'm, get, I'm looking around. I've got something that's taken my mind off the fact that I'm walking. And even, you know, some of these big supermarkets, you're walking up and down the aisle, even in a supermarket, you're walking up and down the aisle, you're in a nice, warm environment, mm -hmm. and you're exercising. Is, is there some value in that, do you think? Absolutely, and that is what I would class as activities of daily living, and that's how I would differentiate bet between those types of activities and structured activities. So activities such as those, and that was a really good example you, you made about where we're parking our car, for example. If we're somebody who uses public transport, getting off a stop earlier than we normally would, just to try and increase the amount of activity that we do. Because as much as I, I promoted us to be doing some strengthening activity on two days per week, some cardiovascular activity, 150 minutes per week, what we also want to be doing is minimising the time which we're spent being sedentary. And that essentially means just being sat in an idle position so not moving our bodies. Yeah. There could be some people listening, Roy, who may be disabled, for example, and we've spoken quite a bit about walking and steps. They may not be able to do that. They may have limited mobility. And the advice there is, is just think about what can you do. Any movement counts. If mm -hmm. you're moving your limbs to whatever degree you can, you're going to be increasing your circulation. So you're going to be pumping blood around the body, which... Um, is then giving the cells the oxygen that they need. So any activity that you can do is good. Um, and yet, yeah, if you're if you're somebody who can't get out of the house, if you are chair bound, don't worry too much about that. There are some things that you can yeah. do to keep the body moving. Yeah. 
So, so I know as well, is there an online resource for people who can get, can think I, I want an exercise that is related to my physical ability? If you've got that up there, what, what, tell us about that. Better Health is a campaign which was launched by the NHS um, within the last couple of years. They often relaunch the campaign at this time of year, as we talked about earlier on. So if you um, key that into your search engine of choice, you will find lots of information available on there, uh, lots of practical information as well, I would say, that's easy to read and often will signpost you to free resources as well um, to give you that specific information. Right. Yeah, I get it. Now, just a quick one I want to mention um, within this because we've been I'm, we've been kind of a bit all over the place. I'm, I'm like a I'm like a kid here because I'm like I want to know this, I want to know that. Um, you mentioned about calories, right? Yeah. And if I'm not rightly mistaken, two thousand for women, two and a half thousand for men. Is that the the average intake? As a rule of thumb, that's what they say we need to maintain our weights. Maintain. And notice I said maintain our weights. If we are looking to lose weight, the key thing we have to remember is that we need to achieve an energy deficit. So what this means is we are burning more calories than what we are taking in. The practical advice around that is, or the advice which we typically would say is that as a female, you would be looking to have around 1,400 calories per day as a male, around 1,900 calories a day as a general guide. Um, so you'll notice there, if you do some quick maths, we're talking around about a 600-calorie deficit, yeah. Is, yeah. which is what we're looking to achieve. Um, some good uh, suggestions around how we can achieve that is I would think about can you be looking at all of your meals and your snacks and your drinks and think about how you can make some small changes to each because if you try to take that amount of calories out of any one meal that would be quite a, um, a noticeable change mm. whereas if you did um, maybe a, a quarter from each of your meals you example, spaced it out yes that difference would be less noticeable and of course if we are being active which we've which we're obviously encouraging this morning, um, that's then going to be burning calories as well. So you're going to be coming at it from both angles. Yeah. Um, but I can't stress that enough. If you are somebody who's looking to lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. This, in order to this lose is, I mean, I know this is going to be a bit of a, a how long's a piece of string question here, but it's say for the sake of argument, you've been a person of average, like you might have a little bit of excess on your belly or something like that, and you were, uh, you were rigidly sticking with that calorie deficit program. As a rule of thumb, how long do you think it'd be before you would notice a difference? Or is that a difficult question to answer? It, it's not a difficult question in terms of um, what I would say is if we've got a little bit of weight to lose, it can be harder than if yeah. we've got a lot of weight to lose, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. A myth around things like metabolism is the, the heavier that we are, we could have a slow metabolism. In fact, the bigger you are, the faster your metabolism will be because it's it's, it's got more to do, the body it? to, to mm. maintain that that weight. Um, so if we're just trying to lose a few pounds, it can be a little bit harder. And what I would say around safe and effective weight loss, if we are monitoring our weight, which I would encourage you to do if that's your goal, because that's the way you're going to know that you're actually making progress, is we only want to be losing around one to two pounds per week, which is 0 0.5 to one kilogram. Wow. If we're losing more than that, chances are, your calorie deficit is too high or you've increased your activity a little bit more than what you can sustain. And you mentioned it, Roy, yourself. Maybe you've um, gone at it full throttle with your uh, routine to start the new year. Um, think to yourself, can I maintain this long term? Yeah. And if you can't, then I would say rein it in a little bit. Because as long as you're losing weight consistently and by as little as one to two pounds a week or half a kilogram to a kilogram, you're on the right track. Mm. And often it's by doing it um, in those little increments will show that you can sustain those changes. It's the sweet. I mean, I know it's an obvious one. It's the sweet stuff. I mean, I'm, but what I found when I was kind of overdoing it, as yeah. it were, is that I'm desperate for sugary food of a night time. And that's counterproductive then because you think to yourself, well, I have managed to achieve, um, you know, my calorie deficit. But you know yourself, you start throwing a Mars bar in and, you know, obviously on any other confectionaries that's available then that is going to just fill it. What you've lost, you've just wiped it out very quickly, haven't you? It can be, but what I would say, take this as a positive as well, is right. I don't tend to say you shouldn't have this or you shouldn't have that. Rather, what I would say is try and incorporate that within your calorie total. Right, um, we yeah. mentioned things like better health, for example. There are... Um, 
tools online where you can calculate your specific calorie requirements based on your individual height and weight because as much as I've said as a female we want to be having around 1400 calories a day a male around 1900 calories a day those are guides and those do vary from individual to individual Um, so you can put your specifics in there and once you know those figures you can then come up with a bit of a plan where you can factor in things like chocolate and confectionery and um in fairness to some of the um confectionery manufacturers these days the they're doing um, options such as the one you mentioned in 100 calorie snacks mm. sizes um, so that's a good calorie idea snacks, right? that's a two per day idea. max yeah. mm. is a little rhyme I like to say so because most people snack I snack in between my meals and actually snacking can potentially help us in terms of not leaving it too long between our meals and therefore overeating at a later time but we then need to do think about the calories in our snacks and if we're having either smaller portions or um, going for options which have less calories, for example, um, that's a smarter way of doing it. But do think about your drinks as well, Roy. It's important to think about it's not just solid foods which gives us calories. Liquids gives us calories. So mm. um, You're on the fizzy drinks. Yes. You also, I know you said you're not doing dry January, um, which I can understand again. You may be I'm doing dry-ish. Dry-ish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Drinking in, in moderation. Damp, damp January, really, at the moment. <laughs> yeah, drinking in moderation is, is, is what's recommended, isn't it? And trying yeah. to have some alcohol-free days. Just bear in mind, if our goal is around weight, alcohol does have a lot of calories in it, so we need to factor that in. And sometimes we don't realise it yeah. when we're in, intoxicated, how many drinks we're having. Yeah, no, I get it. This is all fascinating stuff, I, I, I've got to say. And just finally, sleep. It, whichever way you look at it, you can only achieve so much during the course of the day if you've had a good night's sleep. And the problem you have is sometimes you don't know if you had a good night's sleep, because right? you think, well, I, I've, I've not been awake, but yet you wake up in the morning and you still feel a bit groggy. You can do, and, and sleep is, is so important. Um, it's how we recharge our batteries. Our body is the best machine we'll ever own, um, even in this era of the smart technology we have. And we know those devices need to be recharged and it's the exact same principle with our body. And we know that if we're being active, if we are eating well, um, that should in turn help us to sleep better. Um, Some practical things you could do around uh, sleep is to try and switch off said devices an hour or so before you go to bed so you're not getting that blue light on you. Um, Trying to have a cool environment rather than the warm environment, which is interesting. That actually is is, um, said to help us to sleep a little bit better as well. Mm. And obviously a darkened room can help with with sleep and things like that. Um, But yeah, if you're not sleeping well, that can lead you to becoming more run down and more susceptible to things at this time of year, like we know things like colds and flu. Um, and if I just mention around things like colds and flu, if you're somebody who is picking up these types of illnesses at this time, please think about what types of health care you are accessing. And what I would say to you is, can you be going online and looking at the 111 online resources or contacting 111 via the telephone service? There's also pharmacist which are very highly qualified and can give you that practical advice Um, because it's really important that we're only accessing emergency services in emergencies. I can't stress that enough. Mm. Um, So think about the um, service you can access in the first instance to get that practical support um, rather than accessing A&E. And I would also say um, a plug for my trust, Merzica, we have a website which has got a range of resources and lots of information around various conditions and practical advice which is available. Um, our website is all the W's, merzica.nhs.uk, and you could forward slash help us help you to find out more about that campaign around using appropriate services and all the resources that we have available so it's worth a read there's some good content on there yeah tremendous stuff well listen i i, I know you're a pristinely fit guy i know you get involved because <laughs> the Mer- mercy care put a lot of competitions on is that right you do a lot of activities with them uh so what, what's your what's your next what's your next activity Yes, what we do, we pay into something called the uh, Northwest NHS Games, which is something developed by Merseyside Sports. Sounds very gladiatorial, that. <laughs> it's, it's a way of um, encouraging st- staff to be active and also networking with other organisations because it's available to all trusts across the, the area and indeed going into, into Greater Manchester and Cheshire. Um, you can make it as competitive as you want. So they do things like 5K races, they do football tournaments, mm. netball tournaments. 
um, lots of different tournaments where you have the opportunity to take part, potentially win a trophy, um, and as I say, just have some fun and engage with staff from various different trusts. Yeah. So those events are starting over the next few months. I'll be taking part myself. I'm quite competitive, Roy, myself. Um, so, yeah, so it's good to have things in the diary to look forward to and use those as motivation as well. We've chatted about having that motivation. That motivation has to come from within. Having things like that potentially or signing up to a race or something can help you to spur you on to keep going with your with your um, exercise routines. Brilliant. Listen, Daniel, Dan, it's Daniel Mellin, uh, the Health and Wellbeing Coordinator at Merge Get. It's been fascinating. I think we need to get you back in uh, maybe a little bit later on in the year or something like that so we can continue with this. But it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you very much indeed for that. On your radio, across Liverpool, the North West and North Wales, on DAB+. This is Liverpool Live.